The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. Episode 363 of the Short Time Wrestling Podcast. My name is Jason Bryant. On this show, you'll hear news, reviews, previews, and interviews from the biggest names and notable topics in the sport of wrestling. Joining us on the program again, founder of the Journeyman Wrestling Club, Frank Papalizio. He's got a big event coming back to the Capital Region in New York this coming weekend. The Journeyman, My House, Northeast Duels, and the Collegiate Classic. Frank, You've done a lot of things in the sport of wrestling. You've been an innovator. You've listened to your people. But uh, we, we, we can also add obstetrician to that that title, as I understand. You just delivered a calf, like a literal calf? Yep, we got two heifers. Well, one heifer now. because uh, One gave birth the other day. Um, we got a brand new uh, little one. It's a little uh, male uh, calf, and uh, everything came out good. Mom came out good, and we got one one more coming. So we're a little late in the season here, but uh, nonetheless, it's uh, it's happening one way or the other. I, I you know I live in live in Minnesota. My wife's parents were dairy farmers, so I should know more about cows than I do, but I don't. So um, <laughs> yeah, at least, and I, I have been to the Miracle of Birth Center at the Minnesota State Fair. That's about as close as to birthing a cow I want to be. Believe it or not. We were so ready for it, and this happened really bizarre. We were getting ready to leave, and I looked up, and I said to my son, hey, check the back ends over there, make sure we don't have any activity, because it's any day now. And he says, well, there's a little blood on the back side of the one. And I, I turned around, and when I looked at her, and then I looked up, and the baby calf was walking around on the other side of the pasture. So she, she dropped it right on her own. We didn't have to get uh, involved at all. So it was pretty, uh, pretty exciting nonetheless thereafter. So a lot less messy than it could have been. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. You can, sometimes you got to get in, get in there. Yeah. We, let's, let's just save the visuals. Thankfully, this is a, this is an audio podcast. We don't have to have uh, any visual displays of it, but uh, as we come up on year 15 of this event, that's why Frank's on the show. He's been uh a repeat guest here with this, the events that he's got in the fall, and a lot of a uh, lot of you know pop and flow type of events that float around New York. Uh, first things first is uh, My House Sports Sports Gear has come on as a sponsor for this. They actually sponsor the Division Three show, the Ice Hour here on this network, and uh, Tim Payne's crew has been uh, a supporter of, of small college wrestling and wrestling around the country overall. But uh, what's it mean to have My House on board with this event this year? Very excited about it. Uh, we. We had a long-standing relationship with ASICs, and then they, they've kind of switched some things up at, at this point. And Tim and I have been talking for quite some time, uh, trying to look for an opportunity. Obviously, loyalty is, uh, is something that's important to me, so I've, I've remained loyal with certain partners uh, throughout my tenure. And when there was an opportunity... To, to make a move, I reached out to Tim and said, Tim, I know you and I have been visiting for quite some time. This may be an opportunity. And he, he jumped right on it. He knew that um, we'd be, uh, it'd be a good fit. And uh, the partnerships that we have obviously extend to him. And um, it's exciting because uh, he's excited about it. And that adds a little bit more fire to my step, too. And uh, we're gonna, I think we're going to knock it out of the park together here. The dynamic of this event has uh, has morphed and changed and evolved over the years. This year, you're going back to uh, bringing the Northeast Duels into the fray. Last year, it was the uh, more of a collegiate classic with the round robin format. Rather than scrap the round robin and scrap the duels, you said, "All right, I'm going to bring them both together." Was this just from feedback from coaches, or was it just kind of the best of oh. both worlds? Well, a little bit of both. So I there there's after we're, after you do anything that you instill change to, you have to assess, analyze. And I did that. I went through and I, I assessed what good came out of it, what bad came out of it, what was indifferent. And I got, I got the good, the bad, and the ugly. I got everything. And one of the things that we realized is that 
the number of spectators were down last year. People actually on the site were, were it was down. So we started analyzing why was that. And what we found out is, number one, we were on a Sunday, and that hampered the ability for schools to participate and come watch because many of the school districts would afford um, their team to come to an event via bus if it was on Saturday. But as soon as it went to Sunday, they cut that off. So we lost teams of spectators. Then we realized that people were, from a spectating standpoint, point more engaged from a dual meet perspective. They liked team versus team. It was easy to follow and they could relate to it. So that, that added to it. But on the flip side, the coaches thoroughly enjoyed the round robin. So it was a, a catch 22. One part of it needed duels and the other part of it needed the round robin. However, that being said, some Coaches prefer duels, some prefer round robin. So I finally came up with the, the assessment that I'm going to do dual meets. I'm going to do them on Saturday. I'm going to do the round robin. That's for the coaches, and I'm going to do it on Sunday. And I'm going to give teams the opportunity to do both. We're going to, we're going to advocate that they do both, or they can do one, or they can do the other. And that's exactly what we got. We have uh, the lion's share doing both. We have five or six that are just doing the duels. We have five or six that are just doing the round robin. I talked with Tony Roby on the Inside Virginia Tech Wrestling Show. Uh, we were talking about, uh, I don't know if this actually made the show or not, or if it was a discussion afterwards on uh, them coming up. They're, they're going, they've got a, a, a young team in certain parts, and they're trying to get guys uh, situated in, in spots. And they're like, well, you know, if we did both, seven matches might be a bit much for some of these guys. But some of them uh, just going with, uh, the round robin, it, and it's basically solving and situating the needs for everybody. It's like, okay, well, we want duels. We want X amount of matches. Well, we can't give you five matches on one day. We can give you two here, and you can get three, four more yep. the next day. Yep, so some people are wrestling, like Oklahoma State is wrestling a single duel on on Saturday, and then they're in the round robin on Sunday. So, in essence, that's four matches over over the uh, the weekend, and that. That's what they're looking for. Some people are just hitting two duels on Saturday, and then they'll have the round robin. Maybe there's different guys that are wrestling on Sunday. Some, some will put their full lineup in. Some guys, they don't want weighing in twice. I mean, everybody has their own vision, and everybody has their own needs. This affords the coach to, to do whatever he feels right for his team. And that's what the whole philosophy has been, at least last year, by implementing the round robin is to in, Still some control. Uh, I know we we have a long-standing history with open tournaments, you know, college wrestling, and it and it's good. It serves its purpose, but it, there's been many many years without change, and this is uh, maybe the next progression where we can say, well, we have a little bit more control. You can you can put people of like quality and kind together. And you can control how many matches that's going to be. So, and we know this. We know we start at nine and we're done by three, three thirty. It's a, it's pretty uh, concise. And this is the same format you've been running with the, uh, the Journeyman Fall Classic for the, for the vast number of years. That's correct. Yep, we try to pit. We essentially, and we talked about this last year. We're, we're making a pee wee tournament philosophy, but with the best guys in the country at a collegiate level. So. You, you take your group of people. We have 100. I think right now we're at 186 athletes that are participating in the round robin element. And we break it up into how many people are labeled an A. An A could be a ranked guy, an All-American, a two-time NCAA qualifier, something like that. A B would be a starter in the past. Maybe it was a NCAA qualifier years ago. and and uh, they they haven't qualified maybe this, the past year. And then your C's would be incoming freshmen, people that are maybe they're struggling a little bit. And and then we try to put the A's and B's together, or maybe the B's and C's together, uh, but we try to keep the A's and the C's away from one another. So as it works in terms of eligibility, you got, you got to be uh, rostered, or how's the red shirts work? 
Right. Yeah. You have to be rostered. Um, this is not, there are no red shirts um, coming to the tournament. So as we, as we keep talking about the Sunday event, uh, two different locations this year too. You've got the duels in Clifton park at, uh, I believe uh, your high school at Shenandoah and then the round Robin tournament up the road at its normal haunt, uh, normal spot at Hudson Valley community college in Troy. Yeah, I would love, <laughs> believe me, I would absolutely love to be in the same spot, <laughs> but it didn't work out that way. Uh, finding a finding a gym that can accommodate nine mats is difficult, uh, especially in basketball season. And in the Northeast, they get priority, and that is what we're up against. So we're fighting that battle, but I didn't want to abandon the idea of doing these duels. So I got creative. Look, this event started in a high school, and – we're swinging back on year 15. I thought it would be ironic to, to be in a high school again. We've evolved, obviously, beyond that, but it works. I mean, we, we have a big enough gym to put four mats down. We have exactly, but we have 17 dual meets that are going to take place. So the one, the off duel, that 17th duel, will be in the other gym uh, where we have some youth and high school wrestling that's going on. But for all intents and purposes, those 16 duels fit perfectly on those four mats over four rounds. Um, it, it makes for a perfect fit. Uh, we have a 1,000-person capacity in that one gym, so we'll get a 1,000 people. We'll fill it right up to the brim watching that, and then there's probably another five, 600 that are going to go watch the youth. That's great for a single day, and then we're going to do it all over again. Hopefully, get a couple thousand people at Hudson Valley. That one more thing, that's 17 mats. <laughs> we're setting up in in a matter of hours so we we have our work cut out for us yeah i just uh i, I remember moving mats i i don't think anybody likes moving mats no matter if they're the light ones or they're the uh the heavy ones it doesn't matter nobody likes moving mats now when we get to uh the rationale for starting this thing was bringing high level college wrestling to the capital region where again there is uh no college wrestling to speak of uh there's there's some smaller schools in the, in the fringe areas uh, you know, within reasonable driving distance, but still, you're bringing in Oklahoma State, you're bringing in NC State, you're bringing in Rutgers, you're bringing in nationally ranked teams, you're bringing in North Carolina to the Capital Region. What's it mean again each and every year to bring powerhouse schools in into the region? I, I like to believe that. I mean, you know better than I the statistics that are out there of how many people are going to wrestle collegiately and uh, out of high school, right? I think it's. A grand total, I think it adds up to less than 3%. Uh, less than 1% wrestles Division One, and the lion's share is Division, I, I think it's under almost a half a percent for Division Two, and the remainder is Division Three. So that statistic speaks volumes. It's the reality that we live in. But if you look at the statistics from our area, we blow that out of the water. Whether it's D1, 2, or 3, we really do, we smoke that statistic. And I'd like to believe that this is an influence. If they see it over and over again, then they're going to aspire to be it. They think it's just the next logical step. And we've had some really good guys come, up, come out of our area and go on to wrestle in these, for these institutions, Gwizdowski being one of them. Um, and and the, it's not just my capital region. You've got people that are within, you know, an hour and a half away that are, that are coming to see it religiously. Um, Hamlin, Hamlin said, uh, uh, who's now a part of our wrestling club, he lives in the capital region now, but he was from Vermont. And he would drive down every year to watch this. And he said the first college match I ever saw was with Lehigh. Well, where did he go wrestle? You know, he wrestled, he wrestled for Lehigh. It was at the Northeast Duels. That's something that he saw. And then the same could be said with Austin Mays. Uh, they were teammates together, as it, ironically. So I think, I think that, is, that is the idea behind it. That's 15 years ago. That was where it came from. And now, now it's, it's, uh, you know, it's still pumping strong. I want to stick with that Vermont theme for for a minute because you've got a Vermont team coming, Castleton University, in uh, its second year of a program coached by Scott Legacy, who has been uh, won so many. I don't even know. Let's see, they were they were winning state title fourteen, 
I think, when uh, my high school beat them at the Virginia Duels in 1997. And they were still winning them. You know, I, I just finished my 20-year anniversary, so uh, they're probably still winning them in Vermont. So you've got a, a Vermont college team coming in, too, with, uh, hey, you know, bringing Castleton in for the first time. Legacy is a stud. He really is. He's got it figured out. He's, he's been at the, uh, the control there for, like you said, two years. And just this past weekend, they finished fourth at the, at the Open that they were in. And he's right up in there with, with the, the standard, you know, the Division three standards already. He's already relevant in that world. And I think that's incredibly difficult to do. But it speaks to his system. He's got a great system. Um, people follow him. People like him. And he, it's also great for the capital region because of what you said earlier. We really don't have an option. So the closest wrestling program for us is Williams College, which is it's over an hour away. And it is that is our- academically <laughs> selective. Yeah, very Big time. selective. And they do a tremendous job over there. Uh, Honaker does a great job. Uh, and that is the closest one, but it's difficult to get in. Um, and they're very selective of what they're looking for. But that's that's probably an hour for us, 50 minutes. Um, and then we go to West Point. That's the next, the next one. So that being said, Legacy has tapped into the Section 2, which is our area, the Albany area, uh, very, very much so. And I think it's it's being uh, pretty rewarding to him. Not to mention he's got his own, in you know, the own pipeline for for Mount Anthony. Yeah, every time I can't mention Mount Anthony or Scott Legacy without bringing out our victory in 1997. It's been 20 years, and we still, I still, <laughs> I still, I still, I still, I still is like, yeah, you know, it was, you know, it was 41 to it was 41 to nine after 160. We had that one done. I think he's sick of hearing about it. I even brought it up on the show a couple of years ago. But as we we move forward. Your relationship with John Smith and you know, having your brother wrestle at Oklahoma State. I mean, have you delivered cows for John Smith? Because he's doing things with you. He's bringing his team up there. He's he's taking his team to Italy. I mean, the, the, it's obviously got to be a nice nice boon to your event to say, all right, John Smith's coming. Oklahoma State's coming. I John is amazing uh, overall. He's amazing to me. Uh, he's helped me through my tenure of being involved in the sport. He, from a technical standpoint, from a business standpoint, um, I pick his brain. Now that we even even talk some farming. He's got he's got quite a few cattle himself uh, that he he turned over recently. But uh, nonetheless, he's been a tremendous asset to me. I respect him immensely. Uh, I can't ever get enough of him. I probably aggravate him because I'm constantly pulling on him to to do you know A, B, or C and, and he does the same, you know, he's, he's, I mean, others do the same. I should say they're pulling on him constantly and uh, his time is scarce. So when we get him here, I try to maximize it. I've been on him for a while to come back. If you remember, they were here a few years back, uh, wrestled in a dual setting. Uh, and they had, they had a loss to Lehigh that year. It was Lehigh's, I think it was their hundredth anniversary. And it was a symbolic win, but that was the last time Oklahoma State was here. Um, so I'm making, you know, I'm making good of it now. This time when they return. Oh wow! So I, I was actually there that year. I remember that, and because uh, Connor McDonald beat Obi Blanc at 125, so that would have been, I'll say probably 08, 09. So uh, yep. yeah, 08, I believe. Yeah, yep. so December of 08. Yeah, that was that was the first year I moved out here. Yeah, that was wow. It was the last time. It's been a while because I've been married eight years now, or almost eight years now. Uh, we we look at that relationship, and uh, when when you got a coach like that, and they're going to want certain things, and coaches and teams that that travel, they're going to want a certain amount of events. How much is having the round robin now on Sunday kind of alleviated the scheduling issues? Where I, you know, a couple of years ago, you said that uh, you know everybody wants to wrestle the the, the lowest D one lowest rated D one team you've got. I'm not going to say who who it was at the time, but uh, but it's like everybody wants to wrestle them, and nobody wants to wrestle anybody tough. Uh, has this round robin alleviated some of some of that scheduling gridlock that you sometimes encounter with coaches and programs? Boy, again, some people, some programs are not on a loving a level playing field, you know, and from their perspective that they they don't have 
scholarships. Maybe some people, some programs have four and a half scholarships and, and they, you know, they feel it's impossible to compete against, you know, a fully funded program. So they come in with the, their posture is this isn't right. I, I need, I need this and I need that. Everybody has their own need. And I guess the beauty or the art of this being the coordinator is giving people what they what they want. And you can't always reach harmony, but you get close. And this is the evolution of that, where some people don't even want dual meets. They don't want them. They would rather have success from the from the individual standpoint where I guess you articulated it with Tony Roby. I mean, he's going to have enough dual meets that he's going to, he's going to participate in. On this day, he gets to tend to the, the young guys and, and the veteran guys all in the same effort. And, um, you know, hopefully it fulfills his needs. Uh, you get a guy like John Smith. He knows he's coming for the round robin, and he says, hell, if we're coming all the way out there, let's get a duel in too. And he, he chose to wrestle UNC. UNC wanted to be wanted competitive matches. They wanted, they wanted to wrestle anybody uh, that was tough. So they, they're going to wrestle Purdue. Um, they're going to wrestle Oklahoma State. And I think they've already wrestled. I believe they already are scheduled to wrestle Rutgers uh, already out there. So that, or else they probably would have picked that up, too. Yeah, looking at that uh, Oklahoma State uh, Carolina match, uh, of course we know Coleman Scott's an Oklahoma State alum, Neil Ayersman's an Oklahoma State alum, Kenny Monday's on the uh, with the club down there. So th- that's one that you could look at. Is you know Carolina could have could have co- probably said, hey, we need a home and home here. I mean, they're doing a match that's going to be a draw at either Stillwater or Chapel Hill, and they're doing it at your place. Yeah, it just happened to work out that way. Um, you know, uh, again, I don't know all the the little in, intricate parts of the scheduling for each program, but we were, we were lucky. John Smith had committed to coming here, you know, a year ago. So we knew that that was happening and we advocated teams like, Hey, if you're interested, you know, jump on board. And I think that got the attention of UNC, whether they may have something else going on, you know, the weekend before, you know how it is. There's a million different scheduling conflicts. It's, it's, oh, it's so difficult to get through that scheduling process from a philosophical standpoint, first of all. Second, the logistics. Is the gym available? Is, you know, is, should it be home? Should it be away? And, and so on and so forth. So we, we kind of fill the void in a way when, when, there, is, when there is that conflict, we can, we can help facilitate some of those matchups. And it seemed to work this time around. As we said, we got number three Oklahoma State, number eight NC State, twelve Rutgers, Oklahoma at nineteen with Coach Lou Grizzelli, Carolina twenty two in in uh, non Division one rankings. Ithaca and Marty Nichols, his teams always uh, battle tested at the Division three level. Uh, they're gonna get uh, they're gonna get some tough competition this week. Uh, they are ranked number eight in Division three in LIU Post, which has come out uh, I think every year since they've had a team uh, since they restarted in Division two out from Long Island. They're ranked twenty third in Division two individually. Uh, you got all Americans, of course. Dean Heil, national champion. He's kind of the the highlight guy here at the tournament or at the event this year. And uh, you know, w- when when there's an opportunity, you had mentioned what Hamlin had seen. What about your kids in your club? Who are they looking to see wrestle the most this coming weekend? Well, you get a guy like Piccinini. He's a New York guy, right? They he's he's a guy that comes back when it's time to do camp. We do camp with Oklahoma State. He comes in uh, for the last couple of years. He has established the relationship not only from being from New York, but coming to camp too. So the guys know Piccinini, and he's hot off, you know, the the All Star win. So guys, are, a lot of eyes are going to be on Piccinini, New York guy. You got Kevin Jack, who spends a lot of things. You know, he's from the Iowa style wrestling club with John Deagle, and they're they're like an ally of ours. We do a lot of we do a lot of work with Iowa style. So he's like a guy that's that's a part of us as well. He's, he's in the area quite a bit and guys will be watching Kevin Jack guys like that, you know, and, and then look, Kwiatkowski is coming home to do a clinic as well on top of all this. So it's, it's kind of like a homecoming there. So guys are excited about that. You got a whole bunch of different things going on. We try to make it 
really like a wrestling extravaganza where there's 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 everything going on. There's youth going on. There's high school all star matches, exhibitions technically. Uh, there's the college duels. There's the college round robin. There's a clinic. You name it. We kind of got it going on. Yeah, and if you want to go, uh, you know, birth some cattle, you can do that too. Just make sure you close that gate so that bull doesn't run down the boulevard, right? <laughs> we this this interview almost did not happen. <laughs> Big mistake on on uh, Frank's part. I left the gate open, but uh, luckily the hay was in the in the pasture, and he was he was preoccupied at the moment. But he was walking toward the open gate while I was walking to close the gate. So that was uh, that could have been a head on accident that I would want to avoid. Yeah, I just want to know too is is it is it a myth or is it fact that that bulls when they see red they charge? Well, I can tell you this. Um, I've, I've, I've had the mom be a little bit more aggressive than the bull itself. So, and it didn't matter what I was wearing. If I got too close to the calf, <laughs> she got a little, it got my attention pretty good. So I, my reflexes are still pretty sharp. Yeah. And, and, and with apologies to any vegetarians that may be listening to the show right now, uh, my, ex, again, my, my experience with cattle is, uh, usually, uh, packed up in my freezer right now. Yeah, I can see. <laughs> I can truly understand after you go through the birthing uh, phase of this, how people may have a different perspective of, of their diet. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. And, you know, in the end, it's uh, these are beef cattle. So. All right. Now, one thing that we haven't discussed last time you were on the show, you had hinted about something big that was coming down the pipe. Well, that's something yep. big was the tussle for the troops. that's going to happen in January in Naples, Italy, with Oklahoma State and NC State wrestling, the first duel outside of North America in NCAA wrestling history. Let's just dial back a little bit and talk about how that process whole started. You'd hinted that there was something big. You didn't go on the record with it then, but now it's on the schedule. People know about it. Uh, it, it I could say you could say that's a journeyman-related event here, so we can tie it into this episode. Let's just get, get a little backstory on, on what started that idea. Well, years ago, it was... It was my uh, dream to wrestle in an amphitheater, you know, one of the old, the old ruins uh, like they have in Pompeii or that you would, most people would be familiar with is the Colosseum in Rome. Obviously, that's, that's off limits. But uh, in any event, that, that was the dream. And with my relationship with Miguele Liuzzi of Italy, we had talked about that for years and years. And we started getting closer and closer to it. Uh, of it being a reality. And I started talking to my brother, Pat, about it. And we finally came up with the idea that, hey, you know, it wouldn't be a bad idea to do an NCA match over there. And between the three of us, uh, well, I should say the four, with Liuzzi being the fourth component, but you had John Smith, uh, my brother, Pat, and myself, we discussed it and thought it would be a good idea, a unique opportunity. And it would, you know, it bring bring a lot of eyes to the sport, uh, maybe, and even from an international standpoint. And w- one of the things that we ended up doing was we really struggled to get access to the amphitheater. That was really the goal, uh, it, to the point where I had to get really creative real fast because the culture in Italy is um, there's a little bit, and I don't I don't want to be uh, disparaging in any way but it's easier to just say no because of the associated liability maybe by by working with an antiquity right and they're just they were just hesitant 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 and we all know that you got to make a move uh, within a certain time period from scheduling standpoint so we didn't have the luxury to wait around and i knew there was a naval base right outside of naples where we've been doing some of the stuff that we have been doing with Italy, you know, from a foreign uh, exchange standpoint. So we made it a point. Liuzzi had a contact over there. We made it a point to visit and they were all about it. It was a, it was a match made in heaven. So in the end, it, it actually is probably going to be even more beneficial uh, because the American troops over there are going to get to watch it. It'll be sold out. It will be a packed house. 
no doubt about it. And they are, you know, they, they want to see some activities as well and entertainment on that base. And we're going to fulfill that, basically that obligation. We're going to help fulfill that at least, I, I would say. Any hurdles you had to clear with the NCAA about getting this uh, cleared and approved? Uh, I left I left that up to my brother and John. You know, they, they were the ones that dealt with a compliance standpoint. But it, um, believe it or not, it's, it's actually more common than you would think. I didn't know, but it, it happens in basketball. It happens in football, whether it's, it's scrimmaging, practicing, or competing. There, there is a, there's a precedence that is set there, but in, in other sports. So I don't think it was uh, as difficult as an, uh, an obstacle as it, it may have appeared. Uh, any any event, we everything will remain the same. Um, you know, from a mat standpoint, from the riding time, the clock, the referee, all that stuff is uh, is the same. And and um, did did you hire some guy from Northern Virginia to do your PA? <laughs> yeah, hazards hazards coming in. Um, I I myself was real upfront that. You know, when you when you're in charge or or helping produce an event, you you have systems in place, and you don't want to vary from those systems when, especially when you're getting outside of your your comfort zone a little bit. And for me, I was I was real upfront saying that if we do this, I really want to have Brian Hazard be a part of it. And you know, you know Brian as well as I do. You both you guys are are really among the two best guys in the in the field at all overall and um since brian is so used to our events uh it seemed like a, a slam dunk and he was all about it so it was a match made we we're done yeah i could see that conversation with his wife hey mickey we're gonna go to italy right right around new year's uh yeah that's gonna be a tough sell <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh well, you know you know the match the match is actually in naples and naples is a is a unique it's a unique, unique city. There are areas in there that are pretty rough and tough, and there's areas in there that are are beautiful and uh, picturesque. So it's a it's a historic town, and we're going to get a little bit of both. You know, we're going to be practicing in the inner cities um, where Coach Liuzzi's got a club in there, and he's in the heart of it. So he'll he'll get to they'll get to see the real life. Of, of Naples and and some of it is is like I said it's beautiful and some of it's hard and and I think that's the whole point to go to go see the different culture and feel uh, feel some adversity uh, within reason and in a controlled environment so uh, it's good I mean it's obviously it's very safe we we go there often but it's just not the United States I mean we when we talk about this comfort I'm talking about you know your hotel is not a Marriott. You're not you're not staying in a Marriott. It's not, you know, a five star hotel or a four star hotel. It's it's a traditional European hotel, and and some of those are just a little bit different degree off from what most people are used to. You got a bed and a shower. You know, I just got back from Virginia Beach this weekend, and I'd say that my lodgings I, I stayed on the cheap side, but it was uh, I'd say very European. You know, give me a bed. A shower, hopefully that has good water pressure, and uh, that's pretty much it. I didn't even think I actually I turned the TV on one time, and it was to watch Over the Top. Seriously, that movie came on. I I was glued to it, but that's another story entirely. <laughs> this, this and and in the hotel that we're staying at, they actually provide the food, and the food is off the chart. It is absolutely, it is spectacular. So that's a different, you know, for maybe it's it's lacking in comfort in one area but on the on the flip side you're dealing with an unbelievable cuisine and and opportunity and hopefully these guys aren't pulling too much weight and they get the get the ability to to enjoy such unbelievable cuisine yeah the carb load there but uh, i guess Hazard will be happy to know oh a side note Hazard and i both uh, received our confirmation that we're announcing both d3 and d1 championships this year so uh good note there so you got you got a good one coming out there with you of course he's kind of like been like the de facto journeyman events PA announcer for like five years, 10 years, something like that. Even more, I think. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Hazard's going to love the fact that I'm just, I'm just, I'm just dropping all his news out here on the show, but all right, Frank, anything you've got left uh, surprises, things to check out while you're in the capital region for 
the Journeyman, My House, Northeast Duels, and Collegiate Classic coming up November 11th and 12th. And Clifton Park, New York, day one. Troy, New York, day two. It's, it's going to be action-packed. I'm excited about it. I'm excited that My House is involved. I'm excited that Gwizdowski's coming back. I'm excited for the teams. There's 19 teams that they've given us uh, an opportunity to showcase them. So it's an exciting weekend. You are listening to the Short Time Wrestling Podcast with my daddy, Jason Bryant. And now in its fifth season and having raised in excess of over $150,000, Takedown Cancer continues its mission to make a difference in the fight against cancer. The charity, having no paid salaries, meets the definition of a grassroots organization. It's an of-the-people, for-the-people organization with all proceeds going toward cancer research and patient aid via the Randy Shaver Cancer Research and Community Fund. Funding is directed to some of the most brilliant, talented, and hardworking cancer researchers in the business. Take Down Cancer is looking for additional volunteers to help with the 2017-18 season. Whether involved at the youth, middle school, or high school, or even college levels, there are opportunities for you to host Take Down Cancer events. Let's make a difference. Please join us as we Take Down Cancer. Visit www.takedowncancer.org or visit us on Facebook to get started. Take Down Cancer. No one fights alone. Big thanks to Andy Voigt for sending the Take Down Cancer memo my way. Glad to incorporate it here on the Short Time Wrestling Podcast. Again, my name is Jason Bryan. As you heard at the beginning of the show, we just heard some news, some reviews, some previews, and some interviews here on the Short Time Wrestling Podcast. If this is your first time listening, or if it's your second or third, and you're still getting into this wonderful world of podcasting, I would encourage you to go to matttalkonline.com slash getshorttime and subscribe via iTunes or Apple Podcasts. Uh, there's also uh, various different ways to listen by going to madtalkonline.com slash listen. That includes Spreaker. That includes iHeartRadio. And yes, people, coming soon, very soon, this show on Spotify. Just got the notification that we are good to go on Spotify, so that's coming within the coming week. We will put out information on how you can listen to this program on Spotify, one of the more popular uh, music on demand listening services out there. So, yep, short time coming to Spotify. That's big news. Speaking of news, I was kind of off this weekend as I headed back to Virginia as uh, my college roommate Jeff Rusak, a uh, four time NCAA wrestling qualifier, he was the number five seed at nationals in 2012 up in Albany. He went to the Old Dominion Sports Hall of Fame this weekend. And while we were down there, uh, Harry Miniam, who writes for the Virginian Pilot newspaper in Norfolk, and actually, believe it or not, former ODU wrestler. Uh, he has had the beat for ODU men's basketball and football for a number of years. He's now uh, in his role as a columnist. I actually used to work with his brother at the Daily Press in Newport News. And uh, Harry wrote a column on Rusak, and it wasn't about his wrestling uh, acumen. As as Jeff was funky, he pinned about 50 guys in college with a leg cradle. Yeah, he, he had some junk. He had some funk, some Boger-style uh, funk that was going on there. And he's a Virginia Beach firefighter. And he was down in Puerto Rico. You know, helping uh, the situation with the hurricanes and whatnot. And and Harry wrote a really good story about Jeff and, and his wife, Melissa, who I also went to college with. She was a soccer player. And while wrestling was part of it, the story is what, what Jeff going into the Hall of Fame and then being a, a, a firefighter in there. Uh, of course, their, their relationship as uh, they were both in school at the same time. And really, really good story. And to be able to go check that story out, you can subscribe to the daily free Mad Talk online newsletter. This goes out each and every morning at madtalkonline.com slash news. You can sign up and check it out. I'll actually put a link to that particular article, because it's about my buddy Jeff, into this episode's show notes. So, uh, Harry Minium, I'm trying to get Harry on the uh, the Old Dominion Monarch Madcast show. Rusak will be on it here in the coming weeks. But uh, interesting story about uh, you know wrestlers doing good things. And I just happened to know uh, this wrestler pretty well. And uh, it was a real, real good time to go back home and spend a lot of time with... Uh, you know, people you've you've had uh, you've had your ups and downs with over the years, and you know, sitting there, and as as Jeff came back one year from uh, the NCAA championships, he was wrestling, I believe it was 165 that year, and walks in, and he didn't have to make weight for a while. And this is the last time he's going to make 65. He had actually beaten Nick Nemeth that year, uh, Kent State. You might know him if, for you WWE fans as Dolph Ziggler, but uh, he beat Nemeth in the consolations, and then uh, there was a bag of like 20 Tyson frozen like chicken patties in the freezer. He ate 18 of them in one day. So, yeah, that was the last time he was ever seeing 165. So uh, glad to see Jeff and his family, his three kids, uh, Wyatt Deacon and the four-month-old Finley. 
So uh, Charlie Bush, who was also on that program, he's a copy up here in St. Paul. He uh, gets to hang out with me all the time. Timmy Goodale was also on the program. We were all around for the event. Got to see Coach Simons, a uh, legend in wrestling. Uh, you know, a guy far more wrestling knowledge than I will ever know. Coach Steve Martin was there right before uh, the team went up to uh, the Hokie Open. So good times back home. And, uh, oh, yeah, Old Dominion won, like, the worst football game in the history of sport. It was 6 nothing against Charlotte. Ugh. Ugh. By the way, the Monarchs are 7-0 and all-time when I attend home games at Foreman Field. Other things to discuss that are on the radar, that is this program and how you can support it and the rest of the network, to be quite honest. That is through our Patreon page at matttalkonline.com slash join the team. Or if you do want to do a one-off through, uh, through PayPal, that's fine, matttalkonline.com slash contribute. And uh, you will be one of the newest team members here on Matt Talk Online. Again, uh, Rob Davidson. The latest to jump in and show his support for the network and this program. MattTalkOnline.com slash join the team. Keeps it uh, pretty much ad free. Our, our friends at Compound do have a little bit of uh, skin in the game as they have been our, our gear sponsor here. And speaking of Compound, got an email from Cliff Fretwell and the crew. And this is about the whole singlet thing. You know, if you know, singlets for the OGs, if you're not on the two piece uniform bandwagon just yet, Compound and Compound Teamwear at CMP Teamwear. Dot com has you covered singlets as low as 50 bucks custom designed none of this clip art stuff you're not getting this off ms paint or, or ms word clip art this is qu- good quality stuff they did my logo they did my branding so uh call up cliff and the crew and see them at cmptteamwear.com circling back for the northeast duels follow it this weekend on turnaflex.com that is uh coach Papalizio's tournament software solutions pretty sure it's gonna be streamed live on flow if not uh, i'm sure you'll find it somewhere Turnaflex.com, and uh, thank you for spending your time with me because you've always got time for short time. Unless you block me on Twitter. The Short Time Wrestling Podcast is proudly outfitted by Compound Clothing. Shirts, singlets, custom gear orders, everything you need. Call up Cliff and the crew at cmpteamwear.com. First time listening? Well, you can change that by going to matttalkonline.com slash get short time to subscribe on Apple Podcasts or listen on your favorite podcatcher at matttalkonline.com slash listen. This show is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.